Keep going. Real quick. There, I think we're going. All right, all right. Okay, you guys ready? Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm Cedar. I'm the after school program coordinator at the Table Community Food Center. And um, today I have some special guests joining me. This is Maggie and this is Jack. They're my kids and they're going to be helping to teach us a little bit of basic kids knife skills today. And we're going to be making some um, fun food art as well. So um, just before we get started, we're going to play a little game. This is a game that we play at the table, usually on the first day of the after school program, just because everyone's getting a little bit nervous and maybe they don't know one another. So we're going to play it. It's called Dice Breaker. And um, what you do is you say your name and you could say your age and your school if you want to. And then you roll the dice and answer the question and they're all fun food questions. So who wants to go first? Jack? Okay, so what's your name? My name is Jack. I'm... Nine. <laughs> Just turn nine. Um, I go to Stuart School. Nice okay. Stuart School. Okay, roll the dice. Ah! Ooh, which question did you uh, ask? It was, okay. it was a, <laughs> What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Nice one. Do you want to do another time? Okay. okay. Bomb. <laughs> Can you read that? What is something you like to do for fun? Go outside and play baseball. Go outside and play baseball, nice. All right, you wanna go next, Maggie? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. What is something you like to do for fun? Mm, draw. You like to draw? Nice one. Oh, and we forgot to, you forgot to say your age in your school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My name is Maggie. I'm 10 years old, and I go to school. All right. You want to roll one more time? <laughs> what is your favorite food? You guys both got the same one. <laughs> um, I think I'm cottage like, cheese. Cottage cheese. <laughs> cottage cheese too. Okay. All right, my name's Cedar. I'm not going to say how old I am, and I don't go to school, but I do teach um, the after school program at the table, the community food center, and let's roll the dice. Maybe I'll get a different one than you guys got. Oh, what's one thing that makes me really happy? I love being with my family. That makes me super happy. Let's do one more. i to get a different one than you guys. What is my favorite sport or exercise? Hmm. I like canoeing. That's probably my favorite. All right, so now that we know a little more about one another, we're gonna get going. So we've got our hats on, we've got our aprons on, we've got our closed toed shoes on, because we're gonna be using sharp things today and we don't wanna lose any digits. What are we forgetting to do? Wash our hands. Wash our hands, exactly. So if you guys can go and wash your hands, and while you do that, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what's happening at the table right now. So at the table right now for programming, we have the food bank. The Good Food Bank is running on Mondays from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, Tuesdays, just for deliveries only. Um, for deliveries, you can call 267-6428, extension 2, before 5 p.m. on Mondays in order to get your delivery on Tuesday. Wednesdays from 3.30 till 6 p.m., Fridays from 2 to 5 p.m. And um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, the orders are pre-boxed, and you can pick your orders up at the back door. For our community meals, and we have them Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 4.30 till 6 p.m. And the meals are available through takeout, which can be picked up at the front door. And this week, we also have the new delivery service available for those who can't make it to pick up a meal for the community meals. And for deliveries, you can call 613-267-6428, extension 26, by 5 p.m. the day before the meal. And you can leave a message with your address and the number of meals and whether they're any vegetarian and a phone number we can meet you at. And then the meal will be delivered between five and six, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And then lastly, we also have the advocates who are available by phone and email. And their phone number is 613-267-6428, extension 29. And their email is advocacy at thetablecfc.org. And also, 
Um, we're delighted to announce that we will be um, running the community gardens this mm -hmm. summer. So um, there'll be some changes. So stay tuned for more announcements on that. Okay, are you guys ready to get started? Do you have nice clean hands? You know what I need to do? I need to wash my hands. So while I go wash my hands, can you guys tell, lean in so everybody can see, can you tell us what your favorite recipe to cook is? Maggie, you go first. Um, spaghetti. Nice. What about you, Jack? Uh. Not sure? Um, La pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> well, does it have? Do I have to be able to cook it? No, it could be your favorite one to eat. Not sure. Um, Did you like what we had last night? Oh, sushi! sushi. I call them carrot pancakes. And we had okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. <laughs> That's that the was weirdest. Popular. That was. The they also just called that. them waffles. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be making food art, and food art is super fun. It can be a snack or it can be a, a meal, depending on how, uh, which foods you include. And you can make it out of anything you've got. So um, right now we do have a little bit of fruit and veg in our house, but we've got some, some beans and nuts and seeds and stuff like that for protein as well to add to the mix. So here, here are some examples of different things just off of the internet of different kinds of food art if you need a little bit of inspiration. I don't know if you can see that. We'll go a little closer. Let's so you can see that the, the plate is basically the canvas for your art, the background, and then you, you were going to use safe knife skills and create a composition on the canvas, your plate canvas. So it can be super fun. So if I don't know if you guys already have ideas in mind, but if you don't, you can have a look at these or those of you who are trying um, this at home, you can have a look on the internet and just see what other people have created just to give you some inspiration. All right. So, oh, and the other thing that's fun about food art is that it is... Um, playing with your food? More play with your food! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just noticing some comments here. People can't hear us. Let's just have a look and see if we can fix that. I think that should fix it. Hopefully, let us know if you can hear us. <laughs> okay. So the other thing that's fun about food art is that um, it's fun for kids and grown-ups. Often in the after-school program, um, the, the volunteers have as much fun doing it as the kids do. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, I'm just gonna get, maybe just get a technical helper here to make sure our sound is working, just hold on. Whoa, technical helper. Oh. Okay, so we're going to get started with our cutting. So if you guys want to take a wet cloth to put under your cutting board. That's just to keep the, keep the cutting board from slipping around on us. And then you can get a cutting board over here. Here we go. So it does a slide on us. You're just going to check it there and see what the problem is with the sand and other things. Technical difficulties. Okay. We'll just keep on plugging along in the hopes that somebody can hear us. Okay, so when we um, when we're using knives at the table, Maggie and Jack, um, what are some things we need to keep in mind? Um, when you're putting it, when you're putting your knife down and you're leaving it, put it underneath the thing. Yeah. So Jack's saying if you're if you're not using your knife and you're done with it, you could tuck it like this so that it's out of the way so nobody's gonna. Hurt themselves. Oh, and when you're walking around, put it beside your waist. Yeah, so sharp behind. Behind, exactly. So yeah. if you're walking with a sharp, you want to um, make sure that you're holding it down nice and flat against your leg, yeah. not touching your leg so that no one's going to um, get hurt and say sharp behind. And does that apply to other things as well? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like what? Like apple cutters. Apple cutters. Um, 
Carrot peelers. Carrot peelers. Anything else? Um. Yeah, anything, anything, sharp. anything sharp, exactly. Can openers, uh, graters, that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, so um, at the table, we always start kids off. It's kind of like a graduated knife nope. system. Yeah. Also, if it's covered in chicken. If it's covered in washed, chicken, with yeah. With the washing. Yes, you have to be careful with knives not to put them into a soapy sink where someone might cut themselves, right? So at the table, we have a special spot where we put them before they get washed so that no one reaches into a sink and cuts themselves. And at home, you can do the same thing. Just don't put them right into the soapy water. Maybe put them on the counter beside, beside the sink. Okay, so we start out, everybody starts out with the same level. We start out with a plastic knife that's not too sharp, the lettuce knife. Um, and that way, um, it's a really good way to practice some of the knife skills that I'm going to show you without injuring yourself. Um, this one is not so great for cutting anything that's super hard. So uh, carrots or sweet potatoes would be cooked first before you try to cut with this guy. Um, but it's really good for cutting mushrooms or melon or anything that's soft Lettuce. like that. Lettuce. Yeah. So we started with this one. This is called our baby level knife. And it's good for cutting babies. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next level um, that we use is this one. This is our our kid level. So we've got baby level, then we've got kid level. No. Once you feel comfortable and confident with the first level of knife, then you move up to the next level of knife. Um, this one is a little less lethal than some of the sharper um, non rated knives, but it is still a little bit sharp, so you do have to be careful. With it, and then once you feel comfortable with that level of knife, then you move up to daddy. the daddy level knife, the grown up level knife, the pairing knife. And um, them for cutting grown ups. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. And last but not least, you move up to the granddaddy level <laughs> knife. And and it was good for cutting grandpa. So um, with all of these knives, they're good for different purposes. So even if you've moved your way up to the biggest level of knife. Um, some knives are better for some things than others. So this knife is actually called a tomato knife. So it's really good for cutting tomatoes. Actually, I, I find this better on the level of the tomato knife. Yeah, and then this one's actually called a lettuce knife. So it's really good for cutting lettuce. So um, just because you've made your way up to the big knife doesn't mean I, it's, it's I say that's the best for lettuce. Okay. I, I say that that one's just. <laughs> that one's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get started here. How much time have we got? Oh, we're, we're, we're still doing okay. So, um, Hey, we need another one of those for both. Yeah, I'll get it for you in a second. Um, so when we're um, cutting, we're learning basic cutting techniques, the goal is to make our food smaller without um, injuring ourselves, right? So, so um, we have two techniques that we use. The first one is called train through the tunnel. So get your imagination hat out of your pocket. Oh, it's already on your head? Awesome. I love your wearing your imagination hat all the time. I, I'm at mine on right now. Are we working? Sound working? Hopefully. Fix there, Bob. There's a chick chirping for you. Okay, we're gonna keep going. So um imagination hats are on. Imagine with me, Jack and Maggie, and everyone else, that your hand is a tunnel and your knife is a train. Okay, so you're gonna use your tunnel fingers. Just hold on, Jack. To hold on to your tippy food item to steady it. And then you're going to use your knife, your train, to go through the tunnel like this. And then it gives you a nice flat edge that you can set down so that your food item is not so and chippy. It's fair. Wow. Yeah, so you may want to do train through the tunnel a couple more times. So that's what we'll do here because it's still pretty big to make it a little bit smaller. And then you'll notice if you do train through the tunnel a couple more times, your food item is starting to get tippy. And that's where you want to flip it down on a flat edge. And then you're going to switch to the second knife technique. What's it called? Do you guys remember? Bear claw. Bear claw, yeah. So hold up your bear claw fingers like this. So bear claw, you want to tuck those, those digits in so they're out of harm's way and tuck your thumb in as well. I think Aisha was showing you guys a bit about this on her video this week as well. So when you're holding onto your food and you're pushing your food closer to your blade, but your, but your um, digits are out of harm's way. So you can use them to kind of push towards your blade without, oh, without happens, cutting yourself. What happens if you go like this and... Well, exactly. So that when, you're, when your fingertips are tucked under, 
their your knuckles will, will hit the edge of your blade rather than your fingers. Well, what happens when you do them? Well, ideally, that's why you start with the plastic knife, so you learn how to do that safely without cutting yourself. <laughs> Got it? So, so Jack brought up an, another point, and that is that this little guy is serrated, and this one is not. So with a, so serrated is these little bumps on the bottom. So serrated knives, um, you use them in a different way than you use I a, a, a straight knife. You didn't? Oh, okay. Well, mm. I am then. <laughs> so with a serrated knife, instead of doing the, the alligator chomp up and down, we're going to do this the saw you back go. and forth. With a tomato, though, you just go. You can tell because that looks like a saw and that looks like a straight line. Yeah. So with the tomato knife, you're going to kind of move the blade back and forth like a, I don't know what moves back and forth like that. The seesaw? Rocking chair? My like that. That's all. And whenever you notice that it's starting to get too tippy and narrow at the top, flip it down to the wider edge and keep those those digits out of harm's way. Are we going to use this for anything? Yeah, we can use this for sure. We don't want to waste it. Yeah, but what if we don't? Well, then I'll eat it because I love tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you're done, you don't want to have a crowded cutting board. Um, so make sure that you're pushing things over the side or moving them elsewhere so that it's not too crowded. And if it's me, then, then you're going to have to wash it. Yeah, more. exactly. And um, when you're done with your knife, but you're going to use it again, you can just kind of, like Jack said, tuck it under the edge of your blade so that nobody injures themselves. I, I like to do it on the same. Yeah. Did I forget anything about uh, how to use knives? Um, you forgot about not going... Yeah, don't roll it towards yourself for sure. Are you guys? Are you ready to make some food art? <laughs> so here we go. Do you guys have ideas in mind for what to make? No, lucky. No, lucky. Okay, so we have these nice big plates. These are going to be our. Okay, one second. I'm just going to be another serrated knife. I have one here for you. Our backdrops, our and here are knives. Here you go. Oh, oh, I like that. <laughs> so what we have is a whole bunch of fruit and vegetables, and I want you guys to pick off of these trays what you think you might use for your food art, and then we'll move the trays out of the way so we can see what you're doing. So think about what you want to create. Um, can I make two things? Yes. And we don't have any watermelons? We don't have any watermelons, no. no. What we do have is um, we've got some peanut butter and some sunflower butter. And tell them the difference between them. Can you tell the difference between them, Jack? Yeah. One has sunflower seeds and one has peanuts. That's right. So if you have any any nut allergies, sunflower butter is a really great um, alternative. And it's, it tastes better than peanut butter. My kids love sunflower butter, and it's awesome because we can actually send it to school because it doesn't look like peanut butter. It's green. It looks like peanut butter. It looks a little like peanut butter, but it's green. Like, if you put it beside peanut butter, it looks green. But if you don't, then it looks like peanut butter. Yeah, and the nice thing about this stuff is that it, it's really sticky, and so it works really well as glue to hold your artwork Mom. together. Yeah. Like with does the brownies. Does an almond count as a knife? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's good. So you could use almond butter, too, if you had that. Mm. Oh, that, that's that, I, I want that. And the other thing we have that works really well, too, if you don't want to use peanut butter, kind of nut butter is, or seed butter, you can use cream cheese. And that works really well as glue to, to hold your stuff together. So do you have what you need here, Jack? I got more. All right. So let's see some no, of those amazing I knife skills in action. I need to make. You choose what you would like. Um, I think I might need. I, want I, I need the raisins. Good. We've got some raisins. We've got some almonds. I need raisins, definitely. We've got some sunflower seeds. And these are chocolate chips. And I know. You know, at the table, we usually try to um, promote healthy eating, but occasionally it's okay to have a little treat too, right? Can, can, can we keep the, these over here? Sure, as long as you share them. <laughs> can we keep these? <laughs> so, um, we're getting a message here from Rowan. Hi, Rowan. <laughs> so, Jack, what, uh, what could you do with the raisins and um, uh, chocolate chips and sunflower seeds and almonds for in your artwork? What would be a good thing to use them for? Eyes. You could use them for eyes if you're making a face. And I'm going to make a sun. For arms a sun. Or legs. Okay, nice. So remember, if you're putting your fingers in your mouth and then dipping them back into other people's food, it's not such a big deal with our own family. But if you were doing it at the table, what would you need to do before you put your fingers back in the food? Wash your hands. Exactly. The other thing we have here oh, yeah. is... Um, 
beans. You got some beans? Yeah, you want to add a little bit of protein and make it a more complete meal. Oh, and there's some toothpicks here too. And toothpicks work really well for attaching things together. So if you wanted to make a sculpture that comes off of your plate, you could use toothpicks to, to, uh, to do that. All right, so you guys ready to get started? So remember, um, Maggie, not to crowd your cutting board too much so that you have room to, um, to cut. All right, let's get started. I'm just gonna take all of these. So Jack, what's your plan? What are you going to make? I don't know, um, sure. but I know, I'm I'm sure gonna make something fun. I don't know something fun. Maggie, do you know what you're gonna make? Chocolate I'm gonna chips. make a farm. A farm. Okay, nice. Oh, that's a good idea. So we've got some cheese here as well. If you wanted to add a little protein, there's also some. Oh, is that the fence? Some spinach. Everybody loves spinach. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got some eggs. So, Coral, my colleague, was mentioning to me that it might be good to include eggs in this um, this video because we have a lot of eggs at the food bank right now. So, if, you, if you've got eggs and you need something to do with them, then hard boiling them is a really fun uh, thing to do, especially for food art with kids. Jack doesn't love hard boiled eggs, but Maggie and I do. So, um, these are some of these are store bought eggs, these big guys, and some of these are. Um, eggs from our chickens. So the way that I cook these, you guys go ahead and start chopping and creating one. Okay. Um, Do you have what you need? I don't want to eat the egg, but I have a good idea for the egg. All right. Well, you use it in your yard and I'll eat it. I'll go back. Okay. That's the other thing is that the greatest thing about this is that you get to create and have fun and play with your food, and then you get to eat it afterwards. That one's not feel. There you go. Yeah. So the way that we cook these eggs is... Um, we just put them in a pot and cover them with cold water and then put the lid on, put it on the stove. And for the bigger <laughs> eggs, we cook them, um, we bring them to a boil and then turn, as soon as it comes to a boil, turn the heat off and um, leave it to sit on top of the hot burner with the lid on. For the big eggs, we do them for 10 minutes. And these little guys from our little tiny chickens, we do for about eight minutes. And that way you don't get that green ring around the um around the yolk that you get sometimes when the egg is a little bit overcooked. The other thing with eggs is that um, you want to use, for hard boiling, you want to use an egg that's a little, not as fresh because the peel comes off more easily. So with our eggs, we write the date on them when the chicken lays it, and that way we know which ones are better for hard boiling. <laughs> no, it's okay. You go ahead and start cooking. All right, let's see what you guys are going to create. What are you okay. making there, Jack? I'm just making this for egg. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Mom, you can have what Mr. Egg. What is it? You might eat Mr. Egg. I'll put it on your plate, and we'll let's see what you eat at the end, and then we'll, have, then we'll eat it. Miss, Mr. Egg, I, that's just one of the creations that I was going to make. Mr. Egg. <laughs> I'm just having a look here to make sure our sound is working. Let me know if the sound is working, folks. Hopefully our technical help is <laughs> fixed for it. All right. I don't think he did any. So here's some knives if you wanted to add some glue, some peanut butter glue or some um, cream cheese glue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that smells good. I want to eat some celery and peanut butter. Can I? Can I, can I can How about it? you create with it and then at the end we're, we're going to eat it. Yay! <laughs> Think about making a, um, a background if you're going to make a picture, or if you're going to make a sculpture, think about how you can build it up off of, off of your plate. Um, what do you think? How are you going to start? Um, I'm just, it just got really, I don't know, but it just got really cold for a second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I shiver for no reason. Oh, yeah. So um, other things that you need to be careful with when you're using uh, sharp things in the kitchen are peelers and okay, grates. So all these guys are chopping away. I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm not chopping at all. Who mm -hmm. do you need to chop there, Jack? Do you want some cucumber? I'm going to use this. I don't know, bro. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to so use we've got about five minutes left. We'd love to see your creations start to uh, take shape. And if we don't finish them during the video time, we will post pictures of what the creations look like when we're all done. Um. 
So um, a couple of other injury causes, sharp things that we um, have discovered at the table are healers and graders. And so um, with the graders, this is a really great design. It's a, it's a great design. It's, it's from Ikea. And it's nice because um, it's cheap and it's not tall like a box grader. So it's great for kids because they don't have to get above it to put their weight down on it. It's um, flat on the counter and it has rubber on the bottom so it doesn't slide around on you. Um, and you're moving in a horizontal action when you're, you're grading versus um, vertical. So it just tends to mean less injuries um, with little knuckles coming with all these sharp edges. And this is treated the same way that a knife is in terms of sharp things. So what do we do with sharp things when we're done with them? Into the sharp bin. Yeah, we have a, like a sharp sink at the table. And so that's where sharp things go um, where are those? before they get washed so nobody gets hurt. How many minutes do we have left? Four. Maybe a few more if you guys are really into this. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that we um, sometimes have some injuries with, so we'd like to teach people how to do is a peeler. And so peelers, um, they don't look all that sharp, but they actually are like little blades all the way along each edge here. And um, we need to worry about knuckles when we're using peelers. So the way that we have the kids do it at the table is we is you hold the item, the food item that you're going to peel, and, and peel away from your sock like this. Keep your knuckles out of the way. Like that. Carrots and sweet potatoes raw are some of the hardest things to cut for kids. And so occasionally, if, uh, if it's a dish where we're not eating it raw, we would pre-cook them a little bit to soften them so that nobody gets injured. I don't know if you guys can see how these creations are coming along. Maybe I'll lift up the camera so you can have a look. Let's see if you can see yours here, Maggie. Everything's backwards. Here's Maggie's. Looks like a, upside down. a sun and a, a landscape behind. Jax, how is yours coming along? Uh, not a whole lot going on so far. Oh, there it is. It's on your cutting board, that's why. It looks like a sculpture, an apple sculpture. What are you creating there, Jack? What are you making? Mr. Apple. Mr. Apple. Mr. Egg and Mr. Apple. They're happy. Awesome. Well, they will be. to create them. <laughs> so they can be happy. The other thing that we sometimes have injuries with um, that we like to show kids how to do safely is opening cans and using cans. Oh, oh, also, also. Toothpicks. Toothpicks? Yeah. You have injuries with toothpicks? <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully not. Hopefully not today, but be careful when you're using toothpicks for sure. Because uh, they have pointy ends. They do, yeah. Um, with cans. Um, <laughs> I got an injury with <laughs> um, Very dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous, people. <laughs> Uh, with cans, there can openers that have, have a sharp edge right here, and so we just out to kids when they're using them. And then, um. <laughs> having a hard time getting that to stick. <laughs> Try some glue, some peanut butter what? glue. So with can openers, um, we get kids to squeeze until you hear a pop, like that, and keep squeezing and turn as you go, and be mindful that there are now sharp edges, two sharp edges on the inside of the can. There's some <laughs> wonderful mess. Mr. Apple is crying. <laughs> so um, the inner edge of the can as oh, well no. as the outer edge of the <laughs> lid are now sharp. Does anyone want some beans? Yeah. beans? Mr. Apple is crying. Can you show show everybody on camera there, Jeff? For everybody, Mr. Apple. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to keep working away here, and we will post some pictures of the finished artwork when these guys are done. But just to wrap things up, I just wanted to remind you that we do have um, the, the programming happening at the table. We have the, the Good Food Bank, um, as well as community meals available for pickup and delivery. And the advocates are available through phone calls and email, as well as that, the community garden coming up soon. And we'd love to, as a home challenge, oh, home challenge, we always out at a home challenge during the after school program so this home challenge of the week is for you guys to try making some food art at home and um, post some photos on our social media and show us your amazing creations we would love to hear from you 
And stay tuned next week for Ramsey on Tuesday, our executive director. He's going to be doing um, a, a Facebook Live video on sourdough on Tuesday at 10.30. So tune in for that. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Have a great rainy Thursday. He's eating an, he's eating an almond. You guys want to say bye? He's eating bye. an almond with his tongue. <laughs> He caught a fly with his tongue.